<laughs> We've been married about 15 months. And uh, we happened to meet on the internet, by the way. You know, at first, you know, I was like, mm, I don't know, maybe he's from Chicago. He might be a <laughs> slick. <laughs> and we got to talking, and um, I realized he was a man of integrity. This is the best age ever. <laughs> because you've been through some experiences and you know some things that you didn't understand earlier in life. You can appreciate it, I think, now, that, um, uh, that you can look back on certain things. You know, true passion is grown out of understanding and knowing someone. The power of our love is, is integrity and honesty. We just tell each other the truth, even when we don't. Agree. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we agree to disagree. Yeah, Rich, that's right. <laughs> I love for you is what? genuine <laughs> and, and real. My love for you is complete. <laughs> <laughs> We've been married about 15 months, and uh, we happened to meet on the Internet. Greetings, can everyone hear me? Greetings, everyone. We are on live today for the National Day of Prayer. We're super excited to be here. Um, we really are um, just coming together to be able to lift up the name of God and to be um, praying on behalf of the nation. So I have a mighty lineup of prayer warriors that are coming on today um, in their own way to share a bit of encouragement, to share um, a word from what God has released to them and to pray. Uh, my name is Prophetess Kimberly J. I am the founder of Kingdom Advancement Strategist and the co-host of this National Day of Prayer, partnering with 108 Praise Radio and Clark TV Network. So we are honored to be on today. I'm going to have the team introduce themselves and we're going to jump right into prayer. So I'll ask um, Apostle Chantel McNabb to come on and give a little introduction about herself and then following Apostle Chantel McNabb, um, we will have um, Pastor Carl Hill and then Dr. Ursula Wright. Great afternoon. My name is Chantel McNabb. I'm the founder of The Sound Global, which is one church in six locations where I serve as the apostle um, alongside my husband, Pastor Marcus McNabb. And we are definitely excited about what God is doing in the kingdom. We're building churches. We're church planners and kingdom builders. Good afternoon. Greetings in the name of our risen Lord and liberator, Jesus Christ. My name is Carl Frederick Hill. I serve as senior pastor of the Evergreen Missionary Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama. Um, I'm just excited to be here. Uh, men should always pray and pray without ceasing. So it's an honor and delight to be able to pray here with you all. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Ursula T. Wright up here in Miami, Florida, CEO and founder of Oxygen Social and the Oxygen Life Center. And really my heart and my focus at this point in ministry is really seeing the kingdom uh, beyond the four walls and seeing um, God in social spaces. So really just have a heart for social justice and equipping us to stand at the intersection of faith and humanity. So I'm excited to be here this afternoon to be able to pray and just to release the frequency of God. Apostle Ray. Hi, I'm Ray Williams from Dallas, Texas. <clears throat> I'm lead pastor of Reset Church and a financial uh, entrepreneur who deals with uh, stock and trading. And uh, I'm just grateful to be here with one, all of these great people and uh, excited about what's going to happen. So, blessings to you. So, we will jump right in. Um, my task was to cover um, a prayer target focusing on mental health, um, focusing on suicide prevention, 
um, just wholeness and inner healing. And this is such a special topic to me. One, because it's Mental Health Awareness Month. And I honestly think that um, we don't focus enough on the importance of mental health and making sure that people are healthy and whole um, and of sound mind. And so God has kept me um, with my own battles with mental health. I'm a survivor of a suicide attempt. And so um, I. Uh, I know uh, when some people can face um, a point in life where they feel like there is no hope. And so I definitely find myself interceding on behalf of people in this space because I know what it feels like. But I know that God is a deliverer and I know he's a healer. And I know that no matter what you face in life, um, that God is able to restore you. So I'm going to pray in this space. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the opportunity, God, to gather in your presence. God, I thank you for those that are uh, represented on today that will go forth, God, to intercede on the behalf of others. And God, for this particular moment, I just want to lift up those that are battling with any form of mental health, God, whether it's depression, uh, whether it's anxiety, God, schizophrenia, bipolar, whatever it may be that they're facing, God. I know that you're big enough to heal. I know, God, because I'm a living witness and I know that you are big enough to restore, God. I know that you can do even what the doctor said can't be done, God. So I ask that you would meet those people right now, wherever they are in this nation, God. No matter what it is that they're facing, God, you are bigger than trauma. You're bigger than tragedy, God. You're big, bigger than failure, oh God. So I ask, Father, that you would breathe a fresh wind in their direction, God. Just touch them right now, God. Take over their mind, God. And the Bible tells us that we're transformed by the renewing of our mind, God. So I speak renewal right now in the name of Jesus. God, I speak healing, God, supernatural healing from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet, God. The Bible declares that we were wounded for our trans, he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him by his stripes were healed. So we thank you, God, for the healing power. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that was spared so that we could have life more abundantly, have life eternally, God. So I speak life right now. I speak life to every person, God, that may be wrestling with thoughts of suicide right now. God, let them have hope. Let them know, Father God, that it is not over. Let them know that there is more in store for them. Jeremiah 29 and 11 tells us that we know the plans you have for us, God, and we know that it's a plan to prosper and not to harm us, God. So let them understand, God, that their life is not in vain, that you have a purpose for their life, God, that you have greater for them, oh God, and that they are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Let them know Oh God, that is nothing wasted, God, nothing broken, that everything they've gone through, God, everything that they've sacrificed for, everything that they've uh, had to endure, God, it is for your good and it's working for them right now. So God, I release a fresh wind in their direction, God, wherever they may be on the jobs and at their homes, in the cars, God, on the street, God, whatever they may be facing right now, God, I just ask that you would have them drop the pills, put the knife down, put the gun down, God, get back in the car, wherever they are, God, touch them right now in the name of Jesus, God. And we stand together, Father God, as intercessors. We stand together believing that you're big enough to do it, God. We thank you, God, right now for victory. I thank you right now for mind transformations all across this nation. I thank you right now, God, that people are understanding that they're fearfully and wonderfully made. They know their worth. They know their purpose, God. They know what it is that you call them to do and that they will begin to walk in it, God. We know that sometimes life will be hard. We know that there are things we may not understand, God, but we know that if you're with us, if you never leave us nor forsake us, God, that no matter what we face, we can get through it. So I just thank you on today for your people, God. Continue to be a blessing, to continue to bless us so that we can be a blessing, God, and we can be an example that others can see our lives and can see the light on our lives and come to know you in the pardon of their sins. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 I'm going to pass it on to Apostle Chantel McNabb to take us through a prayer for leaders. Amen. Amen. God bless everyone. Um, and we definitely know that leading in this day and time, um, strategies have to be changed. Um, I believe that one of the biggest things that we all are realizing is that we are progressing, but it's a great time to lead in this day and this hour. And it's a pleasure to lead in this day and this hour, but we definitely need the hand of God, the wisdom of God, the covering of God, the leadership of God to be upon our leaders. And so we know that now even our leaders, they're facing so much of uh, burdens, um, lifting the hopes and faith of the people in which they serve. And so now as we take this special focus, we just pray for tenacity. We pray for strength. We pray, Lord. 
Lord God, that they will stay focused on the vision and the call that you set them, Lord God, to do, that they won't get discouraged, Father. We pray now for leadership. We pray now for government leaders, church leaders, and also we pray for household leaders. And we pray that their strength would not fail them, Father, that they will stay focused. So, Father, we pray now for that you would, Lord God, cause their focus to be upon the vision, upon the call, upon the duties that you've assigned every leader, Father, in this country, from the pulpit to the White House, Father. We pray for an alignment of focus, that they would focus, Lord God, on what's in their hands. They would focus, Father, for what's in their house. They would focus, Father, to knowing that greater is he that's within them, within them than he that is in the world. Father, give them confidence to know that he that has begun a good work in them, he shall perform it, that the Lord will never leave them or forsake them, Father, even their lonely times and their lonely hours, Father, where the leaders are pressing and pushing, Father, vision, and they're pressing and pushing their families. And Father, the government, Father, is Lord God making decisions on behalf, Lord God, of this nation, of this world. Father, give them your strength, Father. You are the God of power. You are the God of might. You are the God of justice. And so, Father, we pray now that there be a seek to you, Father, that every leader would seek you, Father, and find you, Lord God, in every answer, that they will seek you, Father, for answers. They will seek you for judgment. They will seek you, Father, for laws as they, Lord God, begin to employ, like Lord Jesus, and begin to disperse, Lord God, the will and the, the will of God in, Lord God, this earth realm, that they will seek you first, Father, that we will come to you. Every leader would come to you for godly answers, for godly counsel, for godly understanding that we, Lord God, will lead well, Father, and that, oh, Lord God, God, the leadership of this country, Father, will, Lord God, release, Lord God, a better lifestyle for the poor, a better lifestyle for those, Father, that are in struggle. Father, we pray now for, Lord God, economic development, Father, that you would give our leadership, Lord God, the ability, Father, and the wisdom, Lord God, to be, Lord God, a blessing, let a blessing of financial resources be released, Lord God, across this nation for mankind. Father, we pray, Lord God, for the authority. We pray now, Lord God, that the laws will not work against, I'm Lord told. God, the people of God. But we pray also now for a holy invasion of kingdom, Lord God, minded people to invade this nation, to invade this world, to invade the pulpits, to invade the communities, to invade the platforms, Lord God, that's responsible for making decisions on behalf, Lord God, of a quality lifestyle for the people, Lord God, in which these we serve. Father, let us, Lord God, not be driven by our own, Lord God, pride. Let us let leaders not be driven by their own will and selfish ambition, Father, but let us be, let us be driven by the will of the Father. Let us be driven, Lord God, by the spirit of the living God. May it invade every leader now, Father. Let your spirit, Lord God, invade us. Lead us and guide us in all truth, Father. We pray now that we be led in integrity, Father, that we cleanse our hands, that we clean our hearts, Father. Let your leaders, Lord God, deal, Lord God, with clean hands and a pure down, heart, man. Father, that we, Lord God, will care, Lord God. I pray for compassion to be released back into the hearts of the leaders, that we care for one another, that we care for those that we serve, that we care for the vision, that we care for the mission, Father. Oh, God, we thank you that care that compassion is returning, that love is flowing, Father, through the hearts, Lord God, and minds of your leaders, God. We ask for your assistance right now in government. We pray for kings and queens and presidents now in this nation, Father. We bind assassination and sabotage to the works, Lord God, of government, Father. Oh, Father, and we pray now that every government that is not, Lord God, the Lord God, following you and not ordained by you, that is coming down now in Jesus' name. And Father, Father, we thank you that you are raising up pure government, that you're raising up millennials, that you're raising up young people, Father, to invade the governmental system, Father, for change. Father, I thank you that the change will begin in our leadership, that the change will begin in us, Father, that as we begin to collaborate, as we begin to walk in compassion, that as we begin to care, Here's Father, other. that they will contagiously spread across this nation, Father. I thank you now that pastors are collaborating, that mayors are collaborating, Lord God, city officials 
sisters are collaborating for the furtherance, Lord God, of the kingdom agenda, Father. I thank you now, Father, that we are opening our hands and opening our hearts and opening our doors for wisdom. That we are opening our hands, Father, and opening our hearts for wisdom. We need the wisdom of God now in this time, Father. We pray for righteousness. We pray for justice. And we pray for mercy. Father, I pray that you would have mercy upon us, God. Have mercy upon your leaders, Father. Lord God, give us, Lord God, a chance, Father. Even those fallen leaders, I pray now for backslidden fallen leaders, that you would bring them back to a place of wholeness, that you would bring them, Lord God, focus to the, the reason, the day and the time and the hour that you've called them for such a time as this, Father. We bind it now. We bind sabotage. We bind insecurities, any competition that will come, and Lord God, and divert, Lord God, your leaders off of the path and the plan of God that you have placed them on. Father, we thank you now that the vision, Lord God, that you've given every leader, though it tarry, Father, we believe that it will speak, that it will speak, Father. So cover now. We plead the blood of Jesus over our borders. We plead the blood of Jesus over our, our cities, over our country. We plead the blood of Jesus, Father, in the name of Jesus, that the enemy cannot destroy, Lord God, or have, Lord God, dominion over what you have put, would put your hands upon and what you have called and what you have chosen in the name of Jesus. Now, God, cover the fivefold gifts, Father, in the kingdom. Cover the prophet. Cover the apostle. Cover the teacher. Cover the evangelist, Father. Cover, Lord God, every Lord God, God-given, Lord God, authority and government now, Lord God, to be obedient to your will and to your way. And so now, Father, I pray, God, that you would go into the homes, Father, that as you began, Lord God, to give good leadership and healthy leadership in the homes, that we'll have healthy churches, healthy organizations, healthy workspaces, and, Father, a healthier world. So now, God, I pray that you would continue, Lord God, to give us, Lord God, favor in your sight. Father, let us deal in favor. Let us deal, Lord God, in favor that you, Lord God, will go before us in everything that we do and everything that we say. We shall not fear, Father, what, Lord God, is trying to come upon this world. But we know, Father, that you are with us. And through every situation, you have already planned the way of escape because we love you. And so, Father, even on this day of prayer, let the prayers go out, Lord God, and it touch your heart. And we see a sudden relief, Father, on the things in which we prayed for. In the name of Jesus. We honor you today, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. And it is so. Amen, Pastor Hill. Good afternoon once again. Um, my task is to pray for um, intercessors and uh, intercessory prayer. Um, and, and even thinking of uh, what it means to intercede uh, to literally stand in the gap, as Ezekiel would say, uh, I was thinking through maybe a model, so to speak, of what it means to be an intercessor. I think uh, the, the shining example in scripture that we see is Moses. I was looking at a uh, narrative in Exodus chapters 32 through 34, where Moses is having a conversation with God, prayer, and uh, God is thinking about negating God's promises to the people. And Moses literally intercedes on behalf of people who are unwilling to change who they are. And it says in Exodus 32 that God relented because of the prayer or the conversation that he had as uh, with Moses. And then further, uh, God, as a result, Moses asks of God to see his glory in Exodus 33, right? And as he sees his glory, he passed, he hides in the cleft of a rock, passes by, Moses sees God's glory. And then as a result, subsequent of Moses seeing the glory of God, he comes down off of the mountain and the people see him and see his face shining, radiant. And I would argue that had it not been for Moses having the audacity or the art to stand in the gap on behalf of people who were unwilling to pray for themselves. But the people wouldn't see the radiances of the glory of God on Moses' face, but Moses had to literally stick his neck out on the line and have that conversation with God. So intercessors um, are those who go to God in prayer, uh, stick their necks out on the line to intercede, to stand in the gap, 
on behalf of the people for God or to God. So let's pray. God, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, and your name is worthy to be praised. God, we thank you for all that you have done for us. We thank you for leading us, guiding us, directing us, protecting us, providing for us. God, we thank you for being God. We thank you, O oh God, for just a day that we set aside to literally call on your name, not only just to beseech you, not only to petition you, not only to beg you, but to God in prayer, we are looking to have a dialogue with you, not only to speak to you, God, but that you would allow uh, your holy presence, your spirit to speak to us, that not only as we're speaking to you, that we also hear from you. So God, we pray that we hear from you on this All day. We, God, God, approach your throne, not only to just petition you, but to hear back from you. So, God, we pray that you not only incline your ear to us, but allow us to incline your ear, our ears to you so that we can hear your voice in this moment. Now, God, I pray for those who um, have the audacity, the ought, yeah to pray for others. In the season where prayer for others could not be uh, more stringent, prayer for others could not be more difficult. We pray for those, oh God, who continue to stand in the gap on behalf of humanity. God, we know that all have sinned and come short of your glory. God, we know that even our best righteousness is as filthy rags in your presence. God, we know that we're blemished, we're stained, we're, we're misguided, we're mis directed. God, we know that we're, our humanity is fallible and that we are iniquitous in our ways. But God, we thank you for the grace that you hear us even in our fallen condition. So now, God, I pray for those who stand in the gap on behalf of humanity, who stand in the gap on behalf of their apostles, their leaders, their pastors, their bishops. I pray for those who stand in the gap on behalf of the nations, those who stand in the gaps on behalf of the government. I pray for those who stand in the gap on behalf of their families. I pray for those who are the priests of their household. I pray for those, oh God, who are the priests of their family. I pray for those, oh God, who are the priests of their church. I pray for those who are the priests of the ecclesiastical body, but not only that, God, we pray for those that you are raising up by your power, by your might to speak up and on behalf of those. So God, I pray that you will continue to raise up intercessors, those who are called to pray for others when they have not the need to pray for themselves. I pray that you, God, continue to prick the hearts and minds of but humanity, that they will hear your effectual call to continue to pray for someone else. God, we live, we move, we have our being in you. So God, I pray that you continue to raise up the standard of those who would call on your name, not just for self, but call on your name for others. I know that the word says that you sought for a man to stand in the gap for those and you found none. But God, I pray that you find those who would stand in the gap on behalf of humanity. I pray, God, that you would search out our churches, search out our boardrooms, search out our corporate functions, search out our governments, and find those who have the audacity to stand in the gap for humanity. God, we consider these things God done, God, because you've done it for us before. You've done it for us even in the here and now. So we thank you and we praise you for what you will do. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man. The things that God has prepared for those who love them. God, we love you. God, we're calling on you. God, we're begging at your throne. Because God, we know that if we beseech your throne, that you will hear our prayers and incline your ears to us. Now, God, we pray pray for what you're doing even in this season. We pray for what you're going to do. But God, we know there is going to come a day that the wicked will cease from troubling and the weary will be at rest. We intercede now, oh God, on behalf of those who stand in the need of prayer, those who are broken, those souls who have not discovered or heard your voice. We pray for those even right now 
But God, we know that the chief mediator, the chief intercessor will appear. Because your word says there is but one mediator between God and man. That is the man, Jesus Christ. And when we sit down with the chief intercessor, that we'll hear your welcoming voice say, well done. But in the meantime, we continue to pray. In the meantime, we continue to give your name praise. In the meantime, we continue to genuflect at your throne. In the meantime. We still worship you with our lives in the meantime. We'll continue to stand in the gap on the behalf of humanity. And it is so. It is so. Now, God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, the God who has brought us thus far along the way, hearing our prayer, incline your ear to us. But most of all, grant us your holy and divine peace. We love you, God. We thank you. It is in Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. That's all right. Thank you. Um, I've been tasked uh, this afternoon to pray um, for social justice, kingdom expansion beyond the four walls, revival and reformation, and then those who are on the front line of work beyond the four walls. And I think that this particular, these particular prayer points are uh, super important considering uh, the aggressive nature of the things that we're seeing in society. Uh, when we look at the mass shootings, when we look at the issues that we have in terms of law enforcement and the tension between race, uh, when we look at the church and marginalized populations, there are just so many, uh, I think, different um, perils, if you will, um, that lack, I think, strategic and proper solutions. And I just believe that in this particular hour that the church is really one of God's most potent and powerful forces. Yet I think that we're missing from the social narrative, uh, sometimes due to fear, sometimes due to ignorance, just not knowing uh, exactly how to uh, respond in these spaces. But I do believe that we're on the verge of one of the most uh, relevant and progressive uh, revivals and reformations that we've ever seen, because I believe that there is a collision happening in the pews where people are understanding, listen, um, the church is important, and my, my position here in the church is important, but I also understand that God is calling me to bridge some things beyond the church. And so if exactly. the kingdoms of this world will ever become the kingdoms of our God and its Christ, then we have to begin to uh, have a larger scope and a larger That's labor important. force as it relates to spirit-filled believers who are out there um, in the trenches beyond the four walls. And so I'm here to pray. Uh, on those terms uh, this afternoon. So Father, we just thank you. God, I just lift you up first of all and give you glory. God, you have the preeminent place, Lord God, in our society, in our world. God, I thank you that you said that the heavens, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth have you given to the children of men. And God, as we stand as your intercessors and your interceptors, God, we thank you right now that you are retooling us for the day. No longer, God, will we just be passionate and emotional. But God, we thank you right now that you are clothing us with the wisdom to handle the big things. God, you have given us the responsibility to steward earth. And with this stewardship comes our ability to engage in affairs of justice. God, there are many groups, many people on the margins, Lord God, of society that need you. God, there are many Lord God spaces and communities that need revival and reformation. And God, I'm asking now that God, not only will the spirit of unity arise amongst our churches, but God, the spirit, the strategists, the innovation people, the disruptors, the reformers, that we will come together and be able to celebrate the diversity that comes from the one stream of the spirit, that we will come together and collectively bring solution and resolve. God, the world is hemorrhaging. We have many answers, God, but it's going to take wisdom. It's going to take the broadening of our mind. Mindset. It's going to take God relearning you and having a baptism in Jesus Christ. No longer can you be the poster boy for Christianity, God, and we don't practice you. God, you have given us tools. You have given us your character. God, we should be growing in your nature. But God, you were a systemic and systematic revolutionary. And so, God, I'm asking you to release broader vision. God, to take the cataracts off of our eyes, to remove the 
plugs out of our ears, to remove the callousness off of our hearts, to remove the spirit of competitiveness that is God causing kingdom expansion to be halted and causing us to wither, to causing us to be behind. God, the power must move beyond the pulpit into the other pulpits of the world. God, you have got to begin to open up the eyes of our understanding that, that we see you. God, we need your breath in all of humanity. We need your breath in business, in ministry, in government, God, in arts and media, in entertainment. We need you everywhere. Now give us a willingness to be everywhere. God, we come against every place of fear, fear of difference, fear of the other, fear of working with people who do not look like us, who do not sound like us. God, you have called us to God have dominion in a nation, and God, let there be a holy urgency, God, to see your spirit and your frequency, God, pulse in this earth. God, there are leaders, God, that are sitting in pews today. Sure. There are leaders that are still in caves, God, that are not realizing that you are expanding vision, that, God, you have us on the pivot of a turn. And, God, I'm asking that you will begin to pull frontline workers out of the cave. God, that you will begin to affirm, God, that even though the vision may not look like a traditional church, but, God, that it has an answer for society, that, God, your spirit would breathe your breath upon it and affirm that God to them that this is you. We need, God, new patterns, God. We need fresh rain of God, but more than other, more than anything, we need to be you and be your representation in the earth. Let the cries of justice and the cries of the earth that has been groaning to see the manifestation of the glory of God, let us begin to, by God, walk this earth full of your glory, full of your character, full of your spirit, full of your wisdom. God, we need a, another dispensation like Acts 2. God, where the sound of innovation and diversity was in a room, Lord God, that caused there to be an opening and a portal that caused them to walk in new dimensions of power. So God, we cry out today for communities that have been impacted, for communities that are still in places of dysfunction because we will not function. God, I call right now, God, for a solemn assembly in the kingdom, that God, as we pursue your heart, as we pursue Christ over everything, that the kingdom of God expands, that God, we preach a lot of stuff, but God, can we preach the kingdom? God, can we preach what you preach? Can we, can we build upon the foundation that you have laid? God, we need strength in what we're building in this hour. And God, as you strengthen us, not just in passion, but in wisdom, let us begin to build works that stand. That. God, we thank you right now that we are in a place of divine awakening, that revival is hitting us, that God, we're repenting even for the way that we have weaponized religion. God, where we have weaponized the other. God, there are ways and there are different ways to minister to different people, but God, the trauma, even that we have caused, we have asking God that you begin to teach us how to repress the breach and be restorers of past to dwell in. God, we, we may have issues and biases. God, tear down walls. Let us see people as you see them, that their lives may experience spiritual transformation. God, I thank you right now for those on the front lines, every law enforcement officer, every government official, every pastor, Every apostle who's building something wow. that doesn't look like the something we think it should be. God, for everybody who is on the front lines and standing in the gap between society and faith and dealing with the hard issues, right now I release Psalms 91 over them, that as they dwell in the secret place of the Most High, they'll abide up under the shadow of the Almighty. God even hide them from religion and from religious mindsets that God, you would free them, God, to be your representation on the earth. Let the frontline workers, God, in this particular hour, raise up in a fresh DNA and in a fresh power and in a fresh boldness, but God, with fresh wisdom. And so we cover them. We cover this nation. We cover, God, the trailblazers and the pioneers, those that are pioneering some things first.
that are taking the brunt and the wind. And God, we're asking that you would send and release, Lord God, laborers to the front lines of justice and the intersection between faith and humanity. And so God, we give you glory in this space right now, but let ministries be birthed, let businesses be birthed, let works be birthed, let people come into divine alignment with what you are doing in this hour. And according to Corinthians, you said you make us able ministers according to the spirit and not after the letter. God, let us have the wisdom to move seamlessly between the natural and the supernatural. God, we give you space. We give you uh, permission to operate in this world as we steward the earth. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. God, we just want to participate in what you're doing. Let us honor you. Let us elevate you. Let us repair every broken altar from the church to the four corners, the utmost places of the world, that we would be able to see the greatest reformation that we have ever come into in history. And so God, I honor you, I bless you, I give you glory. I seal this with a threefold cord that can't be easily broken by your spirit, your blood and your word in Jesus name. Amen, Apostle Ray Williams. Ooh. All right, my task is to share and pray about business, uh, economy, and um, I think it's very pivotal when we talk about the church, when we talk about leadership, when we talk about intercession, when we talk about social justice and social change and how the church should impact it. I think um, one of the, the biggest misnomers that we have is that uh, we, ha we can walk into and pursue what we prayed for, but we've not prepared for. And so I'm a firm believer that prayer should not just be something that we do, but we should also be praying because we've been preparing and that prayer propels us to a place where we can impact change. And before we can impact change in our communities, we want to have to be able to impact our own financial situations. Um, the church could be much more effective and the kingdom could be much further if um, the kingdom did not have to contend with the resources and the financial weight of the world. And I don't believe that it's the will of God that the church or the kingdom uh, should ever have to um, take second place. Because when we study scripture and we look throughout the Bible, when we talk about prophets and prophets and, and apostles and ambassadors and other such, those individuals biblically impacted kingdoms, they impacted nations, they impacted policy, they impacted change. And so when we talk about the kingdom agenda and kingdom advancement, I think it starts with first uh, kingdom citizens and so um, I'm very passionate about um, being able to preach a gospel that is liberating people, that is, is being able to impact people and meet them right where they are. I think for a long time, many of us learned um, the gospel from a slavery perspective. And what I mean by slavery perspective, we were totally dependent on the spiritual encounter while we did not prepare our personal portfolio to be able to get to a place of destiny. And I don't think God just wants us to uh, get to destiny, he wants us to be able to occupy it. And so we have to be able to do that by being uh, landowners, by being uh, shifters and movers in markets and systems and strategies. And I think for every uh, ministry leader, and I honor every ministry leader here today, every ministry leader, we have to begin to be more strategic in our thinking, strategic in our approaches, and we have to be um, strategic in our tactics and so that uh, that that i believe if we're going to prepare for where the economy is heading and over the next few months you're going to see a major shift in the economy it's happening actually right now i know the fed released um, a report uh, two weeks ago that said that we were being in a recession by the fall but the reality is that we're in a recession now if you study the markets over the last couple of days the last three days in the market have been extremely volatile you have companies um, who are multi-billion dollar companies who have had great earnings and their stocks are tanking and then you have other companies um, th their earnings calls have been horrible and their stocks are surging and i believe that that is the hand of god exposing that he is still in control that it is still his will that the kingdom flourish and through all of this that we're going to see even as we pray today we're going to see where when the world begins to look for an answer 
the kingdom and the church, we should have the answer. And that answer is found not just in the name of Christ, not just in the blood of Jesus, but also in the mind of Christ. Um, when we when we look at how Jesus rolled and, and, and how he moved, he was a man that was cautious and was cognizant of economy. You, you, you don't you don't get a person who travels with his own physician and travels with Judas who is stealing the money, but but the money Judas is stealing, they're not even missing because there was strategies in place, there were tactics that were in place, and it was it all went to a bigger uh, substructure. And I believe that if we are with the pulse of where God is now. The church, um, and I, I use that word church very loosely, but the kingdom, I should really say, we have to begin to posture ourselves to a place of strength. So when the world comes to us and says that we have to acquiesce or we have to compromise, we can stand for the word of God. We can stand for the character, the nature, and the wisdom and vision of God because we don't, we, we can't be bought. People who are financially fluid or financially liquid um, don't have to compromise. No and so I believe that when we look at our communities, when we look at society, when we look at all of what's what's going on, uh, crime is a byproduct of poverty. People who are impoverished uh, rob other people because if you have more than I have and, you, and I need what you have and I don't see any way of being able to get it because I don't have a strategy and I don't have a vision or, and or I don't have access then you know crime says we'll take what you have and so i believe that it's a trick of the enemy to get us to a place where we walk out of our god nature we go outside of our god character because we move from thriving and we go into survival mode and i believe the gospel is not just intended to meet my spiritual needs but jesus was very concerned about meeting the needs of people's humanity. When we look at the woman with the issue of blood, the issue of humanity, the issue of health and healthcare, we look at him feeding uh, the 5,000. We're looking at not only did he give them uh, something spiritual, he also fed their physical need because substance uh, gives you strength for the spiritual. And so uh, my prayer today is that God would raise up uh, leaders who would have a shift in our thinking, because I think it has to start with leadership. We have to begin to shift in our thinking and begin to care more about uh, the sovereignty of the people on whom we lead. And what I mean by sovereignty, I'm simply talking about the financial sovereignty, the, liber the liberty that they should have. It's not enough for there to be prosperity in the pulpit and poverty in the pews. The days of that just have to leave. We have to have a greater level of accountability. Uh, and I think we also have to begin to, um, and I know this, this might ruffle some feathers, but it's gonna challenge our thinking. We have to begin to question leaders who are leading with no strategy and leading with no ability the kingdom is the only place where you can say the church is the only place where you can say you've been called by god you're, you're not equipped and you can just lead now where you're leading people to god only knows but that needs to cease we have people who are preaching genesis who ain't never read all of genesis and that needs to cease. we got people lifting offerings and having capital campaigns but they can't manage their own capital and we got to get to a place where we before we can empower the pew the pulpit has to be empowered but we're busy chasing platforms as opposed to building systems. And if we get to a place where we begin to build systems, the platform doesn't come, uh, doesn't become as important because when we build systems, platforms are developed organically. And so when we talk about economics, it's, it, it's very important now that we're going to see the household of faith, the people of faith, as the economy begins to decline in the, in the latter months of the year, what will be our answer? What's going to be our answer? And I believe our answer is going to be strategically that we have to begin to look at kingdom economics. There's a kingdom system that God has set in place to prosper his people. The problem becomes that we've allowed the world to tell us that the system that God set in place is robbery. And so I believe that the first thing that we have to do is begin to condition. And, and, and Father, I just thank you that you transform our thinking, that you give us transformative, creative strategies, and that you give us lucid and, and flexible mindsets that you would begin to establish us in banking systems, that you would begin to establish us in real estate systems, that you would begin to propel us to the place of preparation that when we so passionately pray for, we can see the prize of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so Father, empower us that we might be able to be uh, a beacon of hope and light in the communities in which you set us. It's not enough, Father, for us to be in cities where we lead, but we don't impact. It's not enough for us to see hurting and see um, marginalized and see hunger and not 
be able to meet that need. So, Father, I thank you for a supernatural flow that will begin to flow through your churches. Uh, Roberta, let's flow through your ministries because every ministry doesn't have to be a church and every church is not necessarily a ministry. But I thank you, Father, that you would give us wisdom, that you would give us strategy. Most, most importantly, Father, that you would give us discipline, that we would begin to develop the discipline and apply ourselves in ways like we never have before. Because if we want to see what we've never yes. seen, we're going to have to do what we've never done. If we want to go where we've never gone, we're going to have to pursue in ways that we've never known how to pursue. And so, Father, I thank you that you get us past trauma and that you get us past pain and that you look at our pathology and begin to heal that pathology. For some of us are operating out of trauma and some are operating out of toxic pathology. Father, reveal to us the place that where we need to be delivered so that we can be an agent of deliverance. Reveal to us, Father God, those things that are so necessary for us to be able to reach the pinnacle of our potential. For it's not enough to have for us to be gifted and it's not enough for us to just be talented. But Father, we'd like to be made whole so that we can represent you in the earth and that we can represent tangible results that men might oh, yeah. see our results. And when they ask us how, we can't tell them how, we can just tell them who. We don't know how it came about, but we do know who empowered us. And we'll speak of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, give us the very essence of who you are. Give us the essence of your prosperity. Give us the essence of your wisdom. Give us the essence of your, your, your tactics. Give us the essence essence of your thinking and your thought process. I pray in the name of Jesus, Father, that you would invoke in the kingdom and the body of Christ at large and cities all across this globe and cities all across our nation. I pray from the White House to the Whore House to the Outhouse to the Clubhouse, Father God, that your presence, your spirit, your power, and your wisdom would begin to impact us in a very real and tangible way. Father, I thank you that you're shaking us and that you're shaking us like an old bathroom rug. Shake us until old systems are done away with that are no longer effective. Shake Take us into old mindset models and constructs that are not rendering results that we abandon. But Father, build within us a new construct. Create within us a new transformative way of thinking that we might be able to apply the principles of your holy and most powerful word and begin to see the fruit thereof. Father, shake leaders in their thinking. Tradition is good. Tradition can be toxic. But I pray, Father God, that you raise up people who will now begin to defy tradition and defy the norms, disrupt atmospheres, irritate the norm, and begin to establish new protocols that might be able to impact lives and power people. Father, people are suicidal. People are confused. People are hurting. People are hungry. But I pray in the name of Jesus that the God of all hope and the God of all glory would begin to reveal and manifest yourself in a very tangible way. Father, let us be into the place where we're no longer reasonable, but we're radical. We're no longer acquiescing, but we're ascending. We're no longer going along to get along, but Father, we've come to shake up some places and to develop new ground and to take new territory. I declare in the name of Jesus that systems that are antiquated are now done away with. And I thank you for this fresh crop, this new revival that you're raising up. You're raising them up in house churches. You're raising them up in, in warehouse churches. You're raising them up in back alleys. You're raising them up in the back of strip clubs and juke joints. Father, I thank oh. you that you're beginning to shift these systems. You're beginning to raise up those who are unknown and raise up those who don't have degrees and raise up those who don't have seminary and raise up those who yes. don't know hermeneutics and hermeneutics but they do have a word, they do have an assignment, they do have an understanding, and they do have a God-given vision. I pray, Father God, that you will begin to fund visions, that you will begin to release funds and release resources, that communities might be established, the places where the government has left your people. I pray in the name of Jesus that the kingdom would step up and take its proper place, that leaders would begin to emerge and arise and have a new thought process and begin to understand that everything we need, we have the ability to produce what we require. And so in the name of Jesus, let not this Holy Spirit that you've given us, let not this Holy Spirit just speak in tongues, but Father, let us speak economy, let us speak strategy, let us speak resources, let us speak finance, let us be able to go into the boardrooms and into the banking centers, into financial markets and begin to speak the words of a living God. Let the oracles of your finance, let the oracles of your word be released into the atmosphere now. I thank you in the name of Jesus that there's a shaking that's coming in the earth and there's a shaking that's coming to North America. There's the shakings that's coming to continents all across the globe, and you're going to establish your kingdom. I declare right now in the name of Jesus that the heaven that we pray about and the heaven that we, we hope to see, that we can reproduce its model here on earth, and I come against poverty, I come against lack, I come against competition, and I declare in the name of Jesus that everybody and anybody who's been called and commissioned by God, that we have cohesiveness and that we're congruent. Now, Father, I thank you for your people who are hurting financially. I release a grace in the name of Jesus.
Jesus that will cause them to think harder and think different. They don't have a money problem. They have a confidence issue. They don't have just have a confidence issue. They have a faith issue. And I pray, Father God, that you would begin to expand their thinking, that they may begin to see your word in ways they've never seen it before and begin to realize that they have the power to manifest the promise in Jesus name. Amen. My God. Amen. Amen. Wow. I'm still full. Um, I hope this blessed you. I thank each and every one of you for tuning in. I want to take a moment really quick and just have each prayer warrior and speaker um, come on real quick and just share the way that they that you can connect with them on social media. Um, share their social media handles or website so that you can follow their ministries because I know you were as blessed as I was. Um, my page is Kingdom Advancement Strategist for those that aren't connected. Um, that's at KA Strategist on all social media platforms. So we would love for you to connect and follow things that we are getting ready to do. And I'll pass it on to Apostle Chantil to share the ways we can connect with her. Hello, so you can actually connect with me through our website, thesoundglobal.com, and there you'll find um, my picture. You can click on it, and it'll connect you to all of my social media sites. Um, thank you again for this opportunity. It was definitely a blessing. Amen. Amen. Pastor Hill. Uh, again, thank you so much for uh, allowing us to um, kind of convene here to pray together. I do not count it as happenstance or just... Uh, circumstance. Uh, so uh, for me, uh, Carl Frederick Hill on Facebook and Instagram at Carl Frederick Hill, uh, Twitter at CFH off record. Um, that's pretty much me. Bless you again. Bless you, Dr. Wright. Again, thank you for having me. Such a pleasure to be here with everybody. I'm on Facebook. They can find me at Ursula T. Wright and then on Instagram, Dr. Ursula T. Wright. And that's pretty much where I am right now. Thank you. Apostle Williams. You can reach me at raywilliams.org um, on the web. On Twitter, it's simply at Pastor underscore Ray, at Pastor Ray on Twitter. And um, I don't know what my Facebook handle is, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, um, uh, on TikTok, it's Ray Williams official. Uh, most people connect with me just on raywilliams.org. Um, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity. Um, I was blessed to be here by all of the gifts that you have. I'm, I'm really believing God for the Clark TV network to do something explosive. And, you know, if I could just take the liberty, if, if, if that's okay, I want to ask permission before I take liberty, but is, is, is this okay? Go ahead. I just want to prophesy that this network would get every resource, every connection, and anything that is needed so that the gospel can be carried with the weight that this assignment has been given without compromise and without having to compromise quality and standard. I don't think that it's fair for people who are kingdom minded and have a kingdom agenda to have to dumb down their vision and go hobo style while the world can go to hell in a handbasket with the finest of technology, the greatest of signal strength. And so Father, I just thank you that what you're going to do with this particular platform, with this particular medium, and with this particular network, there's not a demon or demonic host anywhere from the pit of hell that could stop it. I thank you for heavy hitters. I thank you that it'll become a machine. And not only will it become a machine, but it'll become a connector of machines. I think just as we've seen a lot of the world networks, we're going to see an emergence of networks just like this one. And so I just release that grace. I release that power. And I just release that word over it that we might be able to see the numbers that they see, that we may be able to have the reach that they have and beyond, that we might be able to see the type of programming without compromise. And, and, and I want to say this, I know it's kind of controversial to the church, but we'll have the type of programming that is not closed-minded, where we don't have to necessarily only have people who we agree with, but that we can have programming that will allow us to dialogue with people who are different, with people who think and move different, and we can share a global perspective because the gospel is intended for be global. It's You know, it's a travesty when people who have neighborhood exposure try to be a voice on global perspectives. And so I just release that, and I, I appreciate this opportunity. I think that this could be something massive, just massive. And I just want to seal that with, with the word of the Lord. I, I know I wasn't supposed to take that much time. You all forgive me, but I just released that. I, I believe that what this brother is doing 
and I believe the vision that he wants to see come to pass, I just release the resources and the move and the wind behind it that it might give um, access and exposure and give God ultimate glory. Amen. Thank you for that. Apostle Chantel, Dr. Wright. Can you all hear me? The audio dropped. Okay. How about now? Yeah, you good. Okay. I was asking Apostle Chantel, Dr. Wright, or Pastor Hill, do you guys have any closing remarks that you want to share? We have a couple of minutes before we wrap. No, good. No, no, I'm good. I just think that um, I just think that the power of these type of frequencies um are so important because a lot of times we just say, well, you know, God is omnipresent. But I think it's just one thing about the internet that when these things go to different frequencies in these different places, like it is a really practical representation of His omnipresence. And so, mediums, technologies, all of those sorts of things. It's just a way to just infuse God everywhere, get him into spaces, get him beyond people's ability to reason with it. And um, I just think it's a great work and it's just good to be here with everybody. So no other thoughts from me, but thank you again. Awesome. Thank you all for tuning in. If you just came in late, go back to the beginning and catch the replay. It was an amazing experience. Um, and until next time, God bless.